If you're trying to decide what shingles to put on your house, would you like to know what shingles a roofer would put on his own house? In this video, I'm going to tell you three shingles I would put on my own house and three shingles I absolutely would not. But to find out what shingle I actually did put on my house, you're going to have to stick around until the end of the video. Let's get started. I would put on my house the Certainty Landmark. Now, the Landmark is kind of like Certainty's kind of entry level shingle. I hate to use the word entry level because that almost makes it sound like it's a builder grade shingle, and it's really not. It's really a step up above what most manufacturers' entry level slash builder grade shingles are. But this is just a standard asphalt shingle. And when I say a standard asphalt shingle, I mean as opposed to something like an SBS modified product. We're going to talk about SBS modified shingles here in just a minute, so bear with me. But the Landmark is not an SBS modified. It's not an impact resistant shingle. It's just the standard shingle. But the Landmark is actually a fairly heavy shingle, and so that means it has more asphalt in it. And in my experience, that means that it's going to actually hold up to hail damage better than some of its competitors that aren't as thick. The other thing I like about the Landmark and really all certain teed products is how well the shingles seal together. Now, one of the things that you're going to find if you're doing your research on YouTube about what's the best shingle out there, you're going to see videos where they're doing what's called a pull test. And that's where they nail a, sh a shingle to a board and then they either by hand or usually mechanically have a tool lift the shingle and they're testing how many pounds of force it takes to pull the shingle off of the nails. Well, this is my opinion that if the shingles seal together on your roof, you don't have to worry about the pull test, the, the pull force. You know, how many pounds of force does it take to pull the, the shingle off of the nail? Because if the shingles seal, the wind isn't going to get underneath them and actually start to take it off. And so, like I said, that's why I like the Certainty product line is because their shingles seal so well. We rarely ever see a roof with shingles blown off and those are Certainty Landmark shingles. I would not put on my house the Owens Corning Oak Ridge shingle. Now, in my opinion, this is more of what I would call a builder grade shingle. So this is a shingle that's very popular with home builders here in my city. And when I use the term, it's kind of a builder grade product, hopefully you understand what I mean by that. That's not the kind of quality product that I would actually want on my house. So aside from the fact that I consider this to be a builder grade product, one of the reasons that I wouldn't really put this on my house is because through the last 12 years of experience, I haven't seen that this product really holds up very well to hail damage. Also, honestly, in my experience, like I say, over doing this for 12 years, when we get called out to a house because shingles have blown off, most of the time, it's the Owens Corning Oak Ridge shingle. So this is not a product that I would put on my house. I would put on my house the Malarkey Legacy. Now, I know Malarkey is kind of a funny name for a product, but Malarkey was kind of a leader in innovating shingle technology decades ago. And so the Malarkey Legacy is what's called an SBS modified asphalt shingle. And basically what that means for you as the homeowner is that it's a rubberized asphalt shingle. So so the SBS product actually has rubber as part of the makeup of the shingle subsurface. And Malarkey was pretty much the pioneer when it comes to this kind of technology for shingles. And like I say, they've been making them for decades, so they've really perfected the technology. We've installed some Malarkey Legacy product, and we've actually had some pretty good experience with it. And Malarkey actually has a great reputation with roofing contractors and material suppliers. Now, I have to admit, I'm very partial to the Certainty line of products, but if Certainty wasn't available to me, the Malarkey is what I would put on my own house. I would not put on my house the Owens Corning Duration Storm. 
So the duration storm is considered to be a class 4 impact resistant shingle, but it's not an SBS modified shingle like the Malarkey Legacy. It's just a standard asphalt shingle, but they, they kind of embed a mesh scrim into the shingle. That scrim is there to protect the mat of the shingle from getting cracked when it gets hit with hail. Whereas an SBS modified shingle, the rubberized shingle, actually causes the hail to bounce off of it without doing damage. An impact resistant shingle that's not SBS modified doesn't really have that capability of causing the hail to bounce without damaging the surface of the shingle. So it, it protects the mat of the shingle from getting cracked and damaged, but it doesn't really protect the surface of the shingle. So hail can hit it, still dislodge the granules, which then exposes the asphalt underneath. So in my experience of working with hundreds of hail damaged roofs, I've only seen this product perform well in a few instances. Therefore, this is not a product that I would put on my roof. I would put on my house the Certainty Northgate product. Now we've got a lot of experience installing this product dating all the way back to 2015, right when it first came out. And like the Malarkey Legacy, this is also an SBS modified asphalt shingle. So like I said, that means that it's basically rubberized. So think of it this way, that rubberized element of the shingle helps to dissipate the impact of hail when it hits the roof. And like I say, it actually causes the hail to bounce off of it without doing as much damage as it does to like a standard asphalt shingle. Now, since we've installed this on so many roofs, and since our city gets so much hail here, we've had plenty of opportunity to go back and inspect roofs that we've installed with the Northgate shingle after a major hailstorm, and even sometimes with like tennis ball sized hail. And the reason that I'm so excited about the Certainty Northgate product is because out of all those roofs that we've gone back and looked at, only a handful of them have actually needed to be replaced. And that was just from the houses that got hit with the most extreme sized hail, some of it softball size. And from an installation standpoint, it's also a really good shingle because being rubberized, it's not gonna break or crack as easily as like a standard asphalt shingle. So you can, you can install it in cooler temperatures. And what I found is that the Northgate even seals better than other shingles in the cooler temperatures. And that's a benefit because that means that you can install it in more seasons than just the warm weather seasons. So this is actually the product that I installed on my own house. So we did this installation back in December of 2016. Day one of the project was on December 30th, and it was probably in the mid 40s and it was sunny, and we expected that the weather was gonna continue to be like that, but the next day really surprised us. It was cloudy and it was about 23 degrees when we had to finish up installing the shingles. And then guess what happened? Nine days later, our city got hit with 100 mile an hour winds, and I didn't lose any shingles. Even though they got installed in such cold temperatures, they still sealed well enough to protect my roof against 100 mile an hour winds. And like I say, that's why I'm so excited about the Certainty Northgate product. Hey, before we talk about the last shingle that I would not put on my house, if you're getting benefit from this video, please consider subscribing, liking, commenting on the video because that actually helps YouTube know that it should show our content to other people like you who need this kind of information. So click the subscribe button, click the bell button, like the video, comment on it. And if you've got experience with another shingle that you really like or that you really don't like, leave that in the comment section down below. All right, so let's talk about the final shingle that I would not put on my own house. And I have to say it's the Tamco Heritage. So in my 12 years in the roofing industry, this is the shingle that, in my experience, working with shingles, this is the one that we've seen the most problems with. And what we've seen throughout the years is the major problem has simply been delamination. And for you as a homeowner, what that means is that's when the granules on the top of the shingle come off. And then you're left with a shingle that 
is just kind of exposed to the elements. The asphalt part of the shingle is exposed to the elements because those granules are there to protect the asphalt, especially from the sun. So once those granules are gone, that asphalt can start drying out, cracking, breaking, curling, or what's called cupping. And we've actually had experiences where we've had to replace roofs on houses that are only like two or three years old and they had the shingle. And I have to say that in all the experiences that we've had with this problem, we've never had a positive experience working with a warranty claim on these shingles. Therefore, this is definitely not a product I would put on my house. So now that you know what my opinion is about which shingles I would and which shingles I would not put on my own house, if you wanna know how to choose the right shingle color for your house, click this video right up here.